Hey there guys and welcome back to Nimby Rails. I'm starting zoomed in on the London Docklands today because between sessions I've added in the Emirates Airline. Someone has made the cable car and put it on the workshop so I've added in the connection. It, the station's in slightly the wrong place just so I can actually get the connection to the Jubilee line and the DLR. But apart from that, that's in now. I don't think anyone's going to use it but we'll see. I've also downloaded the correct train for the DLR, but I've not actually put them in yet, so the DLR still using the completely wrong trains. But that's fine. Today, we're going to look at doing the Vestinial Railway, because I'd kind of forgotten that I haven't done it yet, and I think I mentioned a while back that I was going to do it on camera. So, what better time than now? I've already got Portmatic Harbour in, I must have built that when I put in all the other stations along the Cambrian coast. So that's a nice place to start and we'll come along the sort of seawall thing. I'm not sure what they call it. Out to Boston Lodge Works, the uh, the main depot on the line. Now the, the same company also operates the Welsh Highland Railway. I'm not going to model the Welsh Highland Railway. because that would take too long. I'm going to do that off camera. So, come along here. I'm going to put the depot in. I probably can't actually get a depot in there. There's meant to be one there, but it's not enough space. And then there's meant to be one sort of here and here, but again, not enough space. Um, can I... There we go. And then also the curve is too tight, so that's not helpful. <laughs> That'll do. <laughs> There's too many nodes on the curve, really. Um, oh, I can get a set of points out there to do a siding there, but that's probably all I'm going to manage. I'm not going to get any tracks in here. I might have to do away with the depot, because then I can at least bring this track out like so and maybe lengthen that stretch. No, it's not... Whatever I do, it's not going to let me put in any sort of splits there. That's a little annoying. There we go. These are technically the carriage sidings. The engine shed is sort of here, but I'm just not going to be able to get any more track in than that, so I'm going to leave it there. Continue on with the line. And it's not like the depots are the most important thing in the world. I've never found a need for them. Because the trains always spawn at the station. I guess if I were to actually look into scheduling, I think you can schedule trains to only operate for part of the day. If I was to actually look into that, maybe the depots would be more use. But I just schedule the trains 24-7, because why not? Passengers want to travel in the middle of the night, I'm going to let them. Now, the... Uh, I've stopped at Minforth. Actually, I've I've got to put in the depot at Minforth as well. It's just sort of there. This one I might be able to get in, just because it it comes off here and spirals all the way round like so. There we go. And then we come up to Penryn. Not Penryn Dudraith, like the main line station is called. Vestinia York just calls it Penryn. And the station is in that gap. I'm not sure how long I made the stations. How long did I make Minforth? It's not. Is it going to tell me? 210 metres. That was awfully long. I'm inclined to just say that long. Which is still possibly longer than it's meant to be. Um, Penryn. There's a. What's it called? Um, sort of youth hostel type thing in the station building in Penryn that the Vestinial Grower uses when people volunteer to help sometimes. I think. I don't quite understand. I've stayed in it because I went on a Young Railway Professionals trip to help at Vestinial Railway one weekend and we stayed in Penryn. It's quite nice. 
you'd stay on the platform. If the trains were running, you'd be able to hear the trains run past. The trains weren't running at the time. Um, we've got quite a way to go to the next stop. Actually, we don't. Um, working out where the railway goes is always a bit sort of difficult. So I think it comes in here, and that is the sort of curve it takes in the Rugok. Rugok? Rugok? I have no idea. It's about here. I'm going to go for like 140 meter platforms, I think. That seems reasonable. It, it runs, it is a narrow gauge railway, but it does run awfully long trains for a narrow gauge railway. Because it is, after all, one of the most popular in the country. Um, there we go. And then it curves round here. And then I'm going to go ahead and find the next stop, which is Plas something. Plas Halt. Sort of like in here. I'm going to say. Roughly there. It's really not easy to see. So we'll go with that. Plas Halt. And we'll build back from it. And it sort of comes around like this. Um, he says. There's meant to be a sort of path that I follow here, but it's not marked on the map, so that's helpful. Um, and then it comes sort of... Right, okay, I got that a bit wrong. <laughs> it sort of comes more like this. And then up again. And then sort of back this way. And up across the river. Hmm. No, it was meant to cross more like there. There we go. That'll do. It's close enough. Then the next main stop at Tani Bulk, which is around here somewhere, or possibly up here. up here. Tiny book. Much further away from Tiny book than Plas Hulk was, but there you go. Roll with it. I think it comes out sort of like this. And round and in. There we go. Then we're going up to Campbell's platform. Nice little private halt for a single holiday house. There we go. Campbell's platform. And I'm going to put in the next station as well quickly, which is around here somewhere. So the station is here. Let's try and make that the right sort of length. There we go. Dwalt. Oh, it's a double L. Oh. A double L's a cl sound, isn't it? So. Just. I have no L. It. I'm not sure about that one. Not sure about most of our pronunciations, but that one was worse than normal. Um, I'm going to leave it at that. And assume I've probably got it terribly wrong. I've kind of given up trying to work out where the track goes now. It's <laughs> so long as it gets vaguely towards the station. That'll do. There we go. Now then, out of Didwalt we come up here. So this is where it gets a bit complicated because the old line is now a reservoir, in effect, further up the hill. Um, they, when the line originally closed, they built a reservoir and now the line's reopened, they couldn't follow the original alignment, so they've built this spiral that gets them up higher quicker and saves them having to follow the old alignment for this section. They follow just off of it. 
It means they don't have to go through a really long tunnel and then across the middle of the reservoir. They can go around the edge of the reservoir. And up at the other end of the reservoir is Tani Grisu, which I now have to also find the location of. I think it's about here. We'll put it there. That's slightly the wrong angle, but that's just because I know I need to turn out a bit right at the end. So, Tani Grisu. It's not typing. There we go. Tani Grisu. And. Now we have to try and get the line up there, so it sort of comes up like this now. Over there, through these gaps in the streams. So here's the reservoir, the old line. You can see where that water extends, that's where the old line came across. Then they connected up again like here, the, the new and old alignments. And we're coming up, and not like this. Um, we're meant to come around more like this by the looks of it and get in there. That's going to be a nightmare road to cross. There's a lot of these really diagonal crosses because it's all on the side of mountains. So the roads are going up the mountains diagonally and the railway is going along following the contours. So they cross on really light diagonals everywhere. But obviously I can't do level crossings, everything has to be bridges, so... There we go. Then it comes out of Tani Griso. However it's pronounced, and sort of follows around here. Once again, crosses the road. And where does it go now? So the map claims there's a halt at Glanipool, but... I can't see it on open railway maps, so I'm just going to ignore it. We're just going to take the line up and connect up with what I've already got up at Blaunau. Blaunai. There we go. That didn't take too long. Build all blueprints. So currently, the Fistiniog is operating as two separate services. One from the south up to Tannibulk, and one from the north down to any bulk, I believe. I am not going to do that. I am just going to have the one service all the way through like normally operates. Because that feels easier, mainly. And I'm going to pause the game so that I can actually play. So, if Studio Gravity comes out of this platform, because Watch Highland uses this one to go out that way. Up to Minforth, Penryn. Ugoch, Plasholt, Tannibulk, Campbell's Platform, Tidalt, um, Tannigrisa, and Blaunay for Stiniog. Tannigrisa, Tidalt, Campbell's Platform, Tannibulk, Plasholt, Ugoch, Penryn, Minfall. And purchase a train now! <laughs> what train would be most fitting? Um, normally for this sort of line, I end up using 150s. Normally for heritage lines, I end up using 150s. I have a 142 pacer now, I might use that. Um, it's probably a more reasonable capacity. <laughs> if nothing else. Similar ride experience. Uh, they probably run hourly, which does mean that at the moment I only need the one train. <laughs> Which I'm not thrilled by. I would have thought it would take more time. I mean, I know why it's going so quick. It's because the speed limit is actually going to be like 40 kilometers an hour, not 120. Um, in the interest of having two, I want to say let's run them every 35 minutes. Um, just because then, yeah, then, then a 35 minute interval, two trains. Just it feels like it makes more sense to have two trains than one there. What I am quickly going to do before we end is build the Welsh Harnham Railway through Port Maddock at least. Um, 
which is nice and fun because it runs on the road here and then comes off after the river so it runs on the road over the river so it's like an elongated level crossing there's all the normal level crossing lights here and here and the track runs along the road over the bridge because the road came after the original Welsh Highland Railway closed and so the bridge, is, the bridge was used for the road and then when the Welsh Highland Railway tried to reopen the bridge was in use now this is actually technically a, a level junction I think it's the only one in the UK if not the world that's level between two different gauges I can't do level, level junctions then there's also this line, which is the Welsh Highland Heritage Railway. Not the same as the Welsh Highland Railway. That only runs to like here, but does join up, I think. Um, okay, there is a station up here called Penny Mount. Penny Mount. That I'm going to have to build as tram, just to get the platforms narrow enough. Um, that it looks like only the Welsh Highland Heritage Railway stops at. I can't find any reference to it on the Welsh Highland Railway website. So we're going to assume it's only the Welsh Highland Heritage Railway. And that would be a way actually to get the speed limit down is if I build the entire line out of tram track rather than normal track, but oh well. I build it out of normal track now, so I can't bother to go back. I'm not going to build the rest of the Welsh Highland Railway on camera because time. But there we go. It started, it comes through Port Maddock now. The stations in Port Maddock are a bit of a mess now. The vast majority of Port Maddock is covered by the Port Maddock Welsh Highland Heritage Railway Station and the Gellert's Farm Welsh Highland Heritage Railway Station. Not the Port Maddock National Rail or Port Maddock Harbour for the Fiston York Railway. It's not ideal, but oh well. But the same happens over here. Penry into Drake is really crushed in. So, thanks for watching, like and subscribe if you enjoyed one more, and I'll catch you in the next one.